Orchestra and Gene Rayburn. Brought to you by Fight Roy, the cigarette with 20,000 filters. Twice as many filters as the other two largest selling filler brands for the smoothest taste in smoking. Gergen's Woodbury, specialists in beauty care. Makers of Woodbury soap for the skin you love to touch. Oh, you always say that, Gene Rayburn. And Jurgen's lotion to stop detergent hands. And Crosley and Bendix Home Appliances featuring Crosley Radio and Television with exclusive Zoom antenna. And the fabulous Zoomatic washer dryer all in one. Divisions of Avco Manufacturing Corporation. And now here he is, the star of our show, Steve Allen. Thank you very much, and welcome to our second show. We've got a lot of mail I want to talk about in a minute. Th tremendous mail about last week's show, and there's a lot of excitement here tonight in the theater. What with Elvis Presley being on the show. As a matter of fact, you ought to see the street outside. They got 45 teenagers holding the cops back. It's a <laughs> frightening thing out there. But we have received quite a bit of mail after our first show. We have a whole sack full of it. It just was flooding in, and uh, I'd like to get some of it out here and let you, let you see exactly what I have in mind here. There we go. Get some of it right out here. That's smart. There we go. An awful lot of mail. Hmm. Actually, this is this is all we got, but it was so unusual I wanted you to see it. Says Steve Allen, NBC. Congratulations, you have just won a brand new 1956 Mercury sedan. <laughs> This will prove that contest isn't fixed. That's really something. Isn't it? Well, before going on with the show now, I'd like to introduce some of the famous guests in our studio audience. <laughs> we... As you know, it's Sunday night, and we have a lot of folks out there, and I really, really want to hear it for them. Because the PA is pretty weird, and they can't hear it for themselves out there, you know. First, the gentleman we're very proud to introduce, the hero of the month, Mr. Pat Morgan of Boston, Massachusetts. He is out there. There he is. He is this month's hero because the Heroism Award goes to Mr. Morgan, who ran into an eight-story building and threw three people out of the window before he found out that the building was not on fire. There he is. Right out there. Really here. People actually put up an awful fight, but he threw them out, and at least his intentions were the best. Now, next we have a man you all know, Mr. Clint Robertson. Clint is the man who is the pilot of Vaughn Monroe's helicopter, ladies and gentlemen. And there he is, right out there. Last month, he dropped over 75 portable radios on that glass floor. As I'm sure you all recognize, that really was Ernie Kovacs, ladies and gentlemen. And Ernie... <laughs> that's Ernie and his entire cigar. Ernie starts a weekly show tomorrow. That's Monday night. Be sure to see it 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time over most of these stations. So we'll all be watching you, Ernie. And now I'd like you to meet, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful fellow who opened our show with such a big laugh tonight, Mr. Television, Milton Burrow. There he is. <laughs> It's just wonderful to have you here tonight. No, say, you know what we just went through? Yeah. It's kind of a strange thing. When an MC calls a guest star out on a variety show, they always do that same business. They shake hands and they pat each other on the back and they smile and they talk. But all that happens during the applause. The audience never really gets a chance to hear what they're saying. That's right. You mean what we were just doing. The same thing exactly. It's done almost every day in the week. Uh, why don't we do it again, Milton? But this time, no applause. Yeah. This time, the folks will really hear what we're saying to each other. All right, I'll go off when you introduce me again. I'll introduce you again. This is what the performers very often are saying to each other that you miss. Now I'd like you to meet Milton Burl. Here he is. <laughs> That's the worst introduction I ever heard. <laughs> Listen, it's much more than you deserve, boy. <laughs> I'll never be on this show again. <laughs> is that a promise? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You're a phony. <laughs> now, uh, seriously, Steve, um, you know, this is my summer vacation, and I know that you have a big show lined up for tonight, 
Imogene Coker and Elvis Presley and everybody. But there's one thing that I want to do. What's that, Milton? Well, last week, uh, I was watching the show and it was wonderful, really. Thank I you. saw Bob Hope and he gave you a special uh, award. Uh -huh. And the other night on your own Tonight Show, you received the, uh, the Optimist, Optimist uh, Award, Club, Club yeah. Award. Mm -hmm. And just a few weeks ago, you were given the Junior Chamber of Commerce plaque. In sure. fact, I've had my people check up and I've discovered that during the past year, you received 14 plaques, three citations, five silver cups, four gold cups, and seven certificates of merit. Well, Milton, that's uh, sort of par for the course in TV. You know, people like to give you plaques and awards as long as you're willing to receive them in front of a camera. That's their uh, idea. And you've been given a great many yourself. Well, a few, along with George Goebel and Sid Caesar. All the fellows. Uh, we've right. all received plenty, but uh, Steve, you have received the most. And so at this time, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to Steve Allen this award as the comedian who has received the most awards during the past year. <laughs> Here it is, the award award. Hey! Something. It's really nice, the award award. You can stand there and point all night, but you forgot to tell everybody else what was going on there, Charlie, so lots of luck. We have now uh, quite a bit of excitement coming up, and I wish I knew what the heck it was. <laughs> Billy, you've been keeping secrets from the rest of the gang. We're going to play the piano for you. I think I'll hand that to you right now. Uh, George Dooning and I wrote a song, a ballad. We wrote it early in the season, and it uh, surprised both of us by doing pretty well in a year that was making big hits out of hot diggity dogs and transfusions and teenage prayers and that kind of stuff. It's a song called Picnic, and I'd like to play it for you now with Skitch Henderson and the orchestra.
That was Chris Henderson conducting the orchestra, and the voices, of course, were our own Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet. Edie, incidentally, opens at the Copacabana here in New York on the 25th of July. Those of you who will be in this area might want to see her. You'll be seeing Edie and Steve later in the program, along with Imogene Coca and Elvis Presley. In a moment, you'll meet Andy Griffith. But first, a word from Viceroy, the smoothest taste in smoking. At long last, there's a smoother taste in smoking. It's the Viceroy taste. Smoother, 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 Viceroy. Smoother taste, cause Viceroy has twice as many filters as the other two leading filter cigarettes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bill Elliott. Those golfers know they're smoking. Viceroy is the cigarette so smooth, it's changed the smoking habits of the nation. It's changed millions to the good, smooth tobacco taste that only Viceroy's 20,000 filters can deliver. And that's twice as many filters in every Viceroy tip as the other two largest selling filter brands. That's why the Viceroy taste is never, never rough. It's smoother by far. A smoother taste cause Viceroy has twice as many filters as the other two leading filter cigarettes. Smoke smoother Viceroy. <laughs> One of Broadway's current hit shows is a comedy called No Time for Sergeants. You know, whenever I enjoy anything, I like to try to get it here in front of the cameras and let you enjoy it. And this comedy has been convulsing audiences for many months. The main reason for this is a young fella who has become a big Broadway star in his first appearance. I'd like you to meet him now. Here he is, Andy Griffith. <laughs> They're a nice audience, aren't they? It's Andy, it's, it's folks, kind uh, of uh, silly to ask you how the show's going because it looks like it'll never close. Oh, it's doing pretty good. I don't know whether it'll run like tobacco road that did, but it's doing <laughs> fine. <laughs> I understand also that uh, not content with being a Broadway star, about a year from now you're going to be a big picture star because you're making a picture for Elliot Kazan. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Elliot Kazan and Bud Schubert and me, we all going out here to Arkansas this August. And this we're gonna, this August. I see. This <laughs> one say that. Huh? And we're going to do one called The Face in the Crowd. Well, that certainly should be something to look forward to. Of course, the, uh, the drama actually is nothing strange at all to you. You're all even familiar with Shakespeare, aren't you? Well, I've studied all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> all kinds of what did you say? Things. things I <laughs> the, the main reason that I got into it, though, is, you know, living is high now. Oh, yeah. And I'm trying to help my wife support me and the different ones. <laughs> and, well, I, I'm, I'm selling these books, and, and they're called Five Great Tragedies. Mm -hmm. And they was wrote by this fellow named William Shakespeare, you know, that lived over here in the old country here a while back. <laughs> and the one that I'd love to tell about this evening is that play Hamlet. Now, now, it's named after this young boy, Hamlet, that appears in the play, uh -huh. see? And he lived in this castle over in the old country with his mama and daddy, where it was that his daddy was king over this land. And all, also living with him there was a fellow named Claudius. Claudius? Claudius. <laughs> now, he, he, he was Hamlet's uncle on his daddy's side. <laughs> and before, before the play ever opens up, why, this fellow Claudius plotted and killed Hamlet's daddy so that he might gain the throne. Mm -hmm. and, and, well, I appreciate it. And, and then, then married, married Hamlet's mom. Hmm. And that made him Hamlet's stepdaddy. And all do try to remember that because you will need it later on. <laughs> and, let's see, a fellow named Polonius, he lived there. He was a kind of an advisor to the king. Mm -hmm. And his boy and girl, Lertes and Ophelia, they lived there. And I, I don't remember reading nothing about Polonius's wife, so I imagine that she wasn't living with them at that time. <laughs> and let's see, a fellow... Horatio, he lived there. He oh, was yeah. kind of, of a buddy of Hamlet's. And then there's all kinds of maids and soldiers and stable boys and butlers and that kind of thing. <laughs> now, remember, before the play ever starts, Hamlet's daddy is already dead. <laughs> and, and, and when it opens up, it, it opens up on these two soldiers that was a standing guard one night. Mm -hmm. 
and this ghost come up on them. And one of them seen it. He seen it, and he, he says, hark. <laughs> no, he did. He did, really. They said hark a whole lot back then. He says, he, he, he says, Hark, what is this thing I see before me? And the other one says, Let us flee and seek out young Hamlet, for behold, it bears a visage like unto his father. And it did, too. It looked just exactly. Uh, you, you, you couldn't have took a better picture uptown. They, they went in the house to get Hamlet, but see, he had just come in from high school and was tired and had went home to bed. But anyhow, they woke him up and told him about it, and he got on up and put his britches on and come on outdoors. <laughs> and, and when he got there, this ghost told him how it was that Claudius had, had plotted and killed him, you know, like I told you a while ago. And when it got on telling him, it made him swear to seek out vengeance on his former uncle and present stepdaddy, Claudius. And after Hamlet swore it, while the ghost went on off and none of them ever seen or heard of it again. And it was right there that Hamlet gave that soliloquy about being or not being. <laughs> and, well, for them that don't know now what a soliloquy is, a, a soliloquy is a kind of a self-talk, you know, where you just kindly sit and look away off somewhere and, like I say, you know, talk to yourself. <laughs> and that's what he was a doing. Only he wasn't sitting down, he was walking. <laughs> and when, when he come close to the end of it, he come up on this young girl, Ophelia. And he says to himself, he, he says, Soft, I see Ophelia fire. How about that? Right out loud, he Soft. said that. Yeah. <laughs> and then he sat down and started talking to her, asked her how she was and how her daddy was and her mama and all that. And while he was talking, he seen somebody hiding behind the cedar chest. And he knowed he was in on the plot, so what? he took out his sword and he run the fella. He run him upstairs and he run him downstairs. <laughs> but, but the fella got away and it made Hamlet mad and he come back to Ophelia mad at her. And he hit her into the face and he throwed her on the ground. And he, said, he says, get thee to a nunnery, for thy face is a vile thing before my eyes. <laughs> now, now, it was right here that Hamlet first started acting like that he wasn't all that. <laughs> well, see, he figured that, that, that if the people thought that he played and killed his daddy, thought that he wasn't in his right mind, why, they'd talk around him, and he might learn something by the way, but they didn't. They followed him everywhere. One night, he was up in his mama's room and telling her good night. Uh -huh. And he's seen, these, he, he's seen these curtains rustle just the least little bit, so this time he was ever so cautious. He, he eased out his sword and aged over to where it was that the curtains was a rustling, and he run the fella through. The fella fell, and he parted him. It seemed it was that fella Polonius that I told you about a while ago. <laughs> now, it was right here that Hamlet first knew that he was going to have to get even with his stepdaddy for killing his daddy, and it was also right here that Hamlet's stepdaddy knew that he was going to have to get shut of that boy or he'd have trouble out of him. <laughs> And Hamlet knowed that, and he went out and hid out for a while. And let me tell you, while he was gone, this young girl, Ophelia, she lost her mind and fell in the creek and drowned it herself. <laughs> she did, and Hamlet, he come back to the castle a-crying and a-giving one soliloquy and then another. <laughs> and, and when he got there, this fellow Lurtes, Ophelia's brother, challenged him to a duel. No. Yes, sir. And the king, he seen his jags. He come out of the house carrying two swords. And he give old Hamlet a plain sword, and he give Alertes a sword with a poison point on it. And he had a boy. <laughs> he, I got a little post-nasal drip this evening. <laughs> he, he had a boy to come out of bearing a bowl full of poison wine for Hamlet to drink just in case he won the sword fight. And he put up his hands, and he says, Lay him! And they went to it. Hamlet hid back Lurtes. Lurtes hid back Hamlet, and back and forth a while till pretty soon Hamlet got cut on the arm by that poison sword. And he commenced to weaken, but he fit harder than he ever did, and he kept a backing Lurtes off and a backing him off till he run him through. And Lurtes, he fell down. And Hamlet went over to take a drink of that poison wine, and his mama, she noted as poison, she took it and drunk it herself, and she fell down. No. Yes, sir. And Hamlet, with his last breath, went up to his stepdaddy and run him through. 
and the stepdaddy fell down. And then you see Hamlet, he had done about all he could do, and he... <laughs> and about the only one left standing right here was that fella Horatio that I told you about a while ago. And that's where he give that pretty speech about good night, sweet prince, and the play is over. And like I said before, friends, I got a whole suitcase of these books out here in the alley. And for them of you that love to read a whole lot, I'm proud to say that my company also puts them out in comic book form. <laughs> <laughs> Well, stay tuned now for, stay tuned for Imogene Coca and Elvis Presley and all the rest. But right now, here's beautiful Kyle McDonald with a question about your beauty. Here's that important beauty question. Which is better for your complexion? Cleansing with soap and water? Or with a smoothing face cream? Well, here's the perfect answer. Woodberry, the beauty soap made by skin specialists with seven face cream oils. It's the face cream soap that smooths your skin, helps replace natural oils you usually wash away. Woodberry's rich face cream lather softens, treats your complexion, never dries it. Use fragrant Woodberry soap in your bath, too, and enjoy its smoothing benefits from head to toe. Right now, there's a special one-cent sale on Woodberry. Buy three cakes at regular price, get a fourth for only a penny. But stock up right now. Your dealer supply is limited. Take advantage of this one cent sale. Save on Woodberry, the face cream beauty soap for the skin you love to touch. The two young folks who sang for you a little while ago, Edie Gourmet and Steve Lawrence, are regular members of our Tonight Gang. I know I don't have to tell you record buyers around the country that are two of the most popular singers in America today. But they have a kind of a sad story to tell right now. It's about uh, two singers who are not interested in the popular record field, but are sort of inclined to uh, have operatic interests. And uh, they're right in this dressing room here next to me. We have quite a sad tale to tell. Let him explain it to you himself. Huh? Practice, but I just can't seem to improve. Maybe you ought to practice. The stage is empty downstairs. You know, nobody's there and we're all dressed. Why don't we pick up the rest of the stuff and hey, go? That's a good idea. Get the rest of the stuff and we'll go down. Okay. There we go. Okay? Yeah, let's go. Bend your knees, bow your chin, take a breath, hold it in, 
Tilt your head. Strike a pose. Now, sing. Splendid, splendid, marvelous, wonderful. That was quick. At last you've mastered the trick. Now I will have to give my back a pat. A pat. 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 Around here somewhere. Now I'm singing properly. It's you who's slightly out of key. We're no better off than where we started at. So if we want this song to end. We'll achieve the perfect blend If we bow We'll be back in a moment with a very unusual man of mystery. But first, here's a small man with a big idea for you supermarket shoppers. My, my. The things you can get at the market today. Fresh and frozen vegetables, fruits, meats, whole frozen dinners. Uh-uh. You know you haven't got room for all those in your refrigerator. No room. She needs a real fresh and frozen food center. Crosleys, Shelvador Twins. They give you a store full of food space. Just imagine, you'll have this whole refrigerator all for fresh foods. Bushels more space, all the way from the bottom to the ice factory at the top. And not just a little cubicle for frozen foods, but shelf after shelf of space in Crosley's big self-serving freezer. This is the new way of food keeping you're sure to come to. And look, they are two separate units that fit any home. Your home. Crosley. Shelvador Twins. Here on the Steve Allen Show, we have a policy of trying to present something for everyone, and tonight we have an unusual feature. The practice of yoga is a fascinating one. Most people in the Western world aren't too familiar with its details. The yoga philosophy originated in India ages ago, and its ideas have been handed down through the centuries as the science of yoga developed. Tonight, our guest is a genuine yogi who will tell us more about this unusual and mysterious art. Here he is. Let's welcome Yogi Allen. all you yogis wherever you are and may all the many moons of your everlasting bones surround you in the cosmic cycles of your immortal freem dines and may the spirit of your ding dong approach the finster along with the teachings of Bryce, Dad, Gomalco and Desi Lu in seven out of ten cases that originate in the mouth. I thank you very much. <laughs> Where do you come from, yogi? I come, my friend, from a little village situated high in the Himalaya mountains on the border of Tibet. Its name is Gachipur in my language. I see. What does Gachipur mean in English? Levitt Town. That's about oh. it. <laughs> new development we have over there. Say, hey, what do you yogis do there? Well, we practice yogi. We exercise daily and we eat certain foods. As a matter of fact, in that way, we keep from growing old. Why, there's one man there who is 187 years old and he has the body of a 25-year-old youth. He is very well preserved. That's amazing. How do you explain that? He's been dead since he was 25. We preserved him. How else? <laughs> you must ask me intelligent questions, how young man. Old, how old are you, Yogi? How old do you think I am? Take a guess. Well, let's see. You look about 35. 35. Now tell us how old you really are. 35. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe this, but you missed by 30 years. You mean you're 65 years old? No, I'm five years old. <laughs> Yogi exercises wore me out, man. They're rough, you know. What, what are, mean? say, what are some of the yogi exercises? Well, the most important one, my friend, is breathing. There is yes. a special yogi breathing exercise which took years to perfect. Would you like to see it? Yes, how does it work? Well, first you breathe in, yes. and then you breathe out. That's all there is to it. No, <laughs> but that's the way I breathe already. Through your eyeballs? What do you mean? That's the way you breathe already. We have our 
special method, yes, sir. Now, I understand yogis are very particular about their food, is that oh, right? Oh, my goodness, yes. For example, I am a vegetarian eater. I see. Just what do you eat? Vegetarian. What do you think? <laughs> How use your brain there? I love those fat little bodies. I eat them all up. <laughs> Any other favorite food? Oh, yes, my friend. There is a special type of nut that grows in Tibet, but it takes very careful preparation. I have some right here. Mm -hmm. And after gathering these nuts, I break them in two, and then I put them on the ground, and I stomp on those crazy nuts. Like that, I stomp them into tiny pieces, and then I throw my bird over my cryo. Say, why, why do you do that to the nuts? Why do I stop on them? Yes. Because I hate these nuts! Oh. <laughs> now, Yogi, uh, control, nuts control nuts yourself, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Excuse me there. Yeah. <laughs> Yogi, before you go, would you demonstrate Who's in some... Who's going? Way? What are you talking about? <laughs> yes. Demonstrate, please, in some way what being a yogi has done for you. Well, certainly, my friend. As you know, constantly practicing the yogi science enables yogis to do many unusual things. Why, I can walk across a bed of white hot coals in my bare feet and not feel a thing. Would you like to see me do it? We certainly would. All right, may I have the curtain open, please? <laughs> now, you see here a bed of white hot coals. The temperature must be at least 900 degrees. This heat would cause severe burns and pain to anyone else. Burn anyone else, but not you? I, my friend, will not, whoops, <laughs> I will not whoops, and I also will not feel a thing from this fire here. I am now ready. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I am ready. So stay tuned as we pause for station identification. Out the trumpet for the new Ernie Kovacs show, premiering Monday. back here. <laughs> You're now witnessing one of the problems of live TV, making a three-minute costume change in 30 seconds. Kind of rough to get everything off here. <laughs> By the way, while I'm doing this, <laughs> we might as well meet our next guest, the young lady who's very familiar to all of you, one of TV's top stars. <laughs> I'll have everything off in just a minute. One of TV's top stars, Miss Imogene Coca. Here she is. I'm almost dressed. I'll Can meet... I help you see? No, I'll meet you over in the set in one minute, dear. Thank okay. you. Okay. Well, sir, that's about that. Now, you know, while Imogene gets ready over there, I'll explain what we're going to do. The current trend in Hollywood today, in movies, is towards complete realism. That's the important word. And the filmmakers are uh, going all out to put utterly realistic characters and scenes into their films. They spend millions for realistic props and scenery, but there's one type of scene which is never realistic. I don't know why. It's the scene in which a wife announces to her husband that a baby's on the way. I'll show you what I mean. Here first is the way the scene is in the movies. The fellow just doesn't seem to get the message when the expected baby's announced. I must mention, by the way, there are precisely four old jokes in the scene. We use them on purpose because they serve to make our point better than new ones I could think of. So if you spot them, give yourself 25 points for each one, and lots of luck. Anyway, here is the way it happens in the movies when a baby's on the way. Hello, dear. Oh, darling, you're back. You're back. My back? What's the matter with my back? <laughs> you're home, home from the office. Oh, yes, indeed, sweetheart. How are you? Oh, boy, it's good to be home, too. Gee, what a day. Uh, what's that you're knitting, dear? Something for the dog? 
No, Stephen, I... I... Yes, dear? Well, I, I don't quite know how to tell you. But, well, darling, before long, they're going to be three of us. Well, your mother's coming to visit again, huh? <laughs> no, dear. I mean, a little stranger is coming to live with us. No, sir, you tell Mel Torme he can room at the St. Regis. <laughs> He's not coming here. Darling, you don't understand. A, a little bundle is going to be dropped off at our house. Oh, good. I've been waiting for the laundry all week. I mean, I'm sure <laughs> shirt is ridiculous. Darling, listen carefully. Yes, dear. Soon you'll be hearing the patter of little feet in our house. Oh, I've heard them already, and we've got to do something about those mice, too, you know. <laughs> They're very bad. Darling, I... We... You... We're going to have a baby. Not a baby! What? A, a, a baby? A oh, baby! Oh, sit down, baby. We've got to... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you sit down, baby. Got to... A baby? A baby. A little child? A, a real baby. baby? A boy? A girl? That's all there is. But listen, who, how? I don't... Do you realize there hasn't been a baby in our family for centuries? What? A baby? A baby! Oh, a uh, boy. Uh, 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 relax, dear. I've got... Uh, just take it easy. I'm going out and get a doctor. Oh, baby. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's the way it is in the movies. Isn't that silly? Now, in real life, it's another story altogether. Here's the same scene as it might be played by real people in real life. How are you? <laughs> Hello, Charlie. Oh, boy, oh, boy. How was it today? How was what? Oh, I forgot. You don't have a job. Yeah. Hey, where's the sports page? You're laying on it. Oh, yeah. Charlie. Yeah? We're gonna have another baby. <laughs> Figures. I found out today. Those Pittsburgh pirates, huh? <laughs> How about them here? Hey, what are we having for dinner? Hash. <laughs> Wonder what we'll call it. What can you call it besides hash? <laughs> Charlie. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't seem very excited about it. What's to get excited? We've had hash before. <laughs> That's right. Come on, let's eat. Yeah, I can eat a horn. Let's go. In a moment, Steve will present Elvis Presley. First, a word from Viceroy, the smoothest taste in smoking. At long last, there's a smoother taste in smoking. It's the Viceroy taste. Smoother, 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 Viceroy. Smoother taste, cause Viceroy has twice as many filters as the other two leading filter cigarettes. Yes, this is the answer to America's question. Which cigarette gives me the smoothest taste? Viceroy. Smoother than any other cigarette. And this is the reason. Only Viceroy has 20,000 filters. Made from pure cellulose. Soft, snow white, natural. That's twice as many filters than every Viceroy tip as the other two largest selling filter brands. The result? The Viceroy taste is never, never rough. It's the smoother taste in smoking. A smoother taste, cause Viceroy has twice as many filters as the other two leading filter cigarettes. Smoke smoother, Viceroy. Well, you know, a couple of weeks ago on the Milton Burrow Show, our next guest, Elvis Presley, received a great deal of attention, which some people seem to interpret one way and some viewers interpret it another. Naturally, it's our intention to do nothing but a good show. <laughs> Somebody's barking back there. 
We want to do a show the whole family can watch and enjoy, and we always do. And tonight we are presenting Elvis Presley in his, <laughs> what you might call his first comeback. <laughs> and at this time, it gives me extreme pleasure to introduce the new Elvis Presley. Here he is. your millions of fans are really early gonna kind of a kick seeing a different side of your personality tonight well uh thank you mr allen uh you know, hold it, your guitar here it's not too often that i get to wear the uh suit and tail uh -huh. but uh i think i have on something tonight it's not quite correct for evening wear not quite formal what's that elvis blue suede shoes oh yeah <laughs> i know what you mean well, Elvis, you're certainly being a real good sport about the whole thing, and now I have a little surprise for you. Gene, can I have the surprise? There you are. Thank you, Gene Rayburn. This, Elvis, believe it or not, is a giant petition that was signed by three giants out in the alley. <laughs> no, seriously, this was signed by over 18,000 of Elvis's loyal fans saying they wanted to see him again soon on television. It was sent in to us just the other day by our good friend DJ Don Wallace in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 18,000 signatures on this. Elvis, it's a fine thing. <laughs> Wonderful, Mr. Allen. I'd, I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank all those, all those wonderful folks, and I'd like to thank you too. Well, that's okay, much. Elvis. Now, what you going to sing? What are you going to sing for us first tonight? I want you. I need you. I love you. Here's the big RCA. Here. Oh. Record hit, I, I predict it's going to be one because I've heard you rehearse it. You're going to record it tomorrow called Hound Dog. Yes, I got you a very cute little hound dog right here. And away you go. Who's that? <laughs>
You ain't nothing but a hound dog You're crying all the time Well, you ain't never going to red hand You ain't no friend of mine When I said you was high class Well, that was just a lie Yeah, they said he was high class Well, that was just a lie Yeah, you ain't never going to red hand You ain't no friend of mine You ain't nothing but a hound dog You ain't nothing but a hound dog to cry all the time. Well, you ain't never caught a rabbit and you ain't no friend of mine. women will agree with me. When it comes to your hands, they've just got to be feminine and lovely. You can't cover up rough, red detergent hands. But you can stop detergent hands with Jergens lotion. In a laboratory test, over 400 women soaked both hands in a household detergent. The left hand became rough, raw, and red because it was not given Jergens lotion care. The right hand, with Jergens lotion care, stayed soft, smooth, white. And now when sun and drying wind rob your hands of moisture, leave them parched and uncomfortable, you can depend on Jergens lotion. Jergens lotion penetrates to help replace that moisture. Keeps hands soft, smooth, comfortable. Never leaves a sticky, greasy film. Get Jergens lotion. Only 10 cents to $1. <laughs> Creative programming in television has been increasing by leaps and bounds. Viewers offered a variety of programs designed to educate and inform him. But no matter how far we go, one type of program will always be with us. Its appeal reaches out to children, touches the most sophisticated adults. It's the Western program. Guitars, 10-gallon hats, and cowboy boots make a combination that's assured of high ratings. So for all children and adults everywhere, here is our own... Television land. This is your old partner, Big Steve, and the whole gang, and it's mighty good to be here putting on our show for all you folks out there in television land. Right, gang? Yes, I want to tell you, I love television land, and I love every one of you, and I love good, clean sportsmanship, and I love everybody. Ain't that right, gang? Right. Hey. You know, and friends, it really is great. <laughs> contest for the name of that chord, but it really is great being out here in the Old West, just sitting on the edge of the Cayuse and a watching the corrals doge down the trail, <laughs> while the chuck wagon skedaddles over the bunkhouse and the old buckboard is a hog time the stage brush. You know I mean? <clears throat> That's a nice piece. And you critters, if you want a long horn a coyote, you just pinto out our way and we're going to mosey up a little mesa. Right, gang? <laughs> All right. Hey. Uh, shut up back there. <laughs> I can hardly think. But you know, a lot of you cop folks have rotten in, or written in, <laughs> and asked to know more about the gang here, and I'd like to know more about them myself. I don't trust any of them. Right, gang? I never seen nobody When I say I want quiet, I mean quiet. Now get this. First off, this critter here 
Come on up and crit for him. This All is right, a critter. Right, 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 right on. All right, right, this is Rattlesnake Griffith, folks. He's a mighty brave man. He come to this ranch 10 years ago, and he didn't know the meaning of the word cowardice. No, sir. And he didn't know the meaning of the word fear. No, right, Rattlesnake? Right. I was the dumbest cowboy you ever seen. <laughs> He's talking about any anyway, with this doggy here is Tumbleweed Presley. Come on up, Tumble. Oh, oh yes. I'll tell you about this fella. He is a trick rider. You ain't seen trick riding until you've seen Tumbleweed, right? You tell him. I'm telling him. <laughs> you tell me to tell him, and I'll tell him. <laughs> yes, sir. But you know, let me tell you, yesterday he went across the range on a full gallop blindfolded, and he picked up a rattlesnake with his teeth. He jumped four fences, and he dropped that snake into a gopher hole in a full gallop. Tell him why it was so tough, Tumbleweed. I don't use no horse. <laughs> I don't think he's telling the truth. This one right here, this little girl. Get up here. Come on, wake up there. This is the little flower of the prairie cactus coca. Now, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it to look at her, but that, I don't believe it, and I'm looking at her. <laughs> you look out there, how many times I'm going to have to tell you. This little girl, though, can ride and rope and shoot and fight just as good as every man on our ranch. Tell him why. Because every man on our ranch is a big sissy. <laughs> they are not. They are so. Oh, shut up. Now, partner, we're a friendly bunch here, ain't we? First, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Word from the sponsor, right, man? Let's all Come on up, up here. Yeah. You know, this program, Big Steve and the Gang, are brought to you by my good friends, the makers of Tonzo Bars. <laughs> that is the delicious candy, the candy that comes out of the old west right into your own mouth. And that's what I mean. Now, the Tonzo Bar is a big favorite out here in the west. Tell them why, Rattlesnake. Well, sir, friends, it's because they won't allow them to eat, that's why. <laughs> I'm just a blabber mouth. Anyway, friends, the Tondo Bar is a secret blend. I'll tell you how. The Tondo Bar, the Tondo people... You'll get it right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Tondo people, they take rich cream, and they take sweet sugar, and they take creamy caramel, and they take thick chocolate, and they take all that stuff home. I don't know what they put in the bar. <laughs> and look, friend, look how this Tonto bar is wrapped. It's wrapped to keep that great Tonto flavor locked in that. Yes, sir, friends, if you ever unlocked it, you'd never buy another. And these people... <laughs> and no. friends, dentists recommend Tonto bars because tests prove that Tonto causes more cavities than any other candy. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing more, boy. Tonto is fresh. It's made fresh, it's wrapped fresh, and it's delivered fresh. It don't get stale till you put it in your mouth, but that's your look at it. Just sink your own teeth into a toddler and you'll say... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get your mouth open again. <laughs> and kids, when you open your Tonto bar, don't you throw away that wrapper. No, no you keep that wrapper and burn that wrapper. Because if the Board of Health ever seen one that put Big Steve away for life, and we wouldn't walk away. Right. So, don't forget, friends, that's the Tonto Bar made with the Chemo Savvy Candy Company, Tomain, Texas. That's right. I'm going to open this thing right here and take a bite to show you just how much I like it. There it is. Whoa, ho! I got it. Oh. Oh. You got to there. Yes, good boy. All right, we're going with a little Western song going for you right now. Here we go. You stuffed out with that rabbit bag, man. Would you shut up there? You're making a fool of yourself tonight. Let's get a good lively tempo we're going here. Right. One, two. Get up the bear man! One more time. Well, I got a girl named Miss Sue. She's my little buckaroo. She's a western gallop horse, cactus skin, and a face like a horse. Yippee-i-yo, 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 it's the place I like the best, but I'm gonna tie the whole thing down and move that rank to let it down. Hey! Yippee I O, Yippee I O, Yippee I O, Yippee I O. Hey! Yeah. I went out west on the wagon train, find a man like Big John Wayne. I looked around for days and days and ended up with Gabby Hayes. Yippee I O, Yippee I O, Yippee I O, Yippee I O. 
I got a horse and I got a gun and I'm going out and have some fun. I'm a warning you galoot. Don't step on my blue suede. Yeah, the FBI knows. 